A food bank or food bank is a non-profit, charitable organization that distributes food to those who have difficulty purchasing enough to avoid hunger. In North America and Australia, food banks usually operate on the warehouse model. They act as food storage and distribution depots for smaller front-line agencies, and usually do not themselves give out food directly to the hungry. After the food is collected, sorted, and reviewed for quality, these food banks distribute it to non-profit community or government agencies, including food pantries, food closets, soup kitchens, homeless shelters, orphanages, and schools. Outside North America and Australia, the front line model is often found. Such food banks give out most or all of their food directly to the end users. For both models, the largest sources of food include for-profit growers, manufacturers, distributors and retailers who in the normal course of business have excess food that they cannot sell. Some food banks receive a substantial proportion of their food from individual donors, including their volunteers. There is considerable overlap with food salvage, food rescue and gleaning. The world's first food bank was established in the U.S. in 1967, and since then many thousands have been set up all over the world. In Europe, which until recently had little need for food banks due to extensive welfare systems, their numbers grew rapidly after the global increase in the price of food which began in late 2006, and especially after the financial crisis of 2007-08 began to worsen economic conditions for those on low incomes. The growth of food banks has been welcomed by commentators who see them as examples of an active, caring citizenship. Other academics and commentators have expressed concern that the rise of food banks may erode political support for welfare provision. Researchers have reported that in some cases food banks can be inefficient compared with state-run services, and that some people feel ashamed at having to use them. <laughs> Standard model With thousands of food banks operating around the world, there are many different models. A major distinction between food banks is whether or not they operate on the front line model, giving out food directly to the hungry, or whether they operate with the warehouse model, supplying food to intermediaries like food pantries, soup kitchens, and other frontline organizations. In the US, Australia and to an extent in Canada, the standard model is for food banks to act as warehouses rather than as suppliers to the end user, though there are exceptions. In other countries, food banks usually do hand out food parcels direct to hungry people, providing the service that in the US is offered by food pantries. Another distinction is between the charity model and the labor union model. At least in Canada and the U.S., food banks run by charities often place relatively more weight on the salvaging of food that would otherwise go to waste, and on encouraging volunteerism, whereas those run by unions can place greater emphasis on feeding the hungry by any means available, on providing work for the unemployed, and on education, especially on explaining to users their civil rights. In the U.S., cities will often have a single food bank which acts as a centralized warehouse and will serve several hundred front-line agencies. Like a blood bank, that warehouse serves as a single collection and distribution point for food donations. A food bank operates a lot like a for-profit food distributor, but in this case it distributes food to charities, not to food retailers. There is often no charge to the charities, but some food banks do charge a small, shared maintenance fee to help defray the cost of storage and distribution. For many U.S. food banks, most of their donated food comes from food left over from the normal processes of for-profit companies. It can come from any part of the food chain, e.g. from growers who have produced too much or whose food is not sufficiently visually appealing, from manufacturers who overproduced, or from retailers who over-ordered. Often the product is approaching or past its sell-by date. In such cases, the food bank liaises with the food industry and with regulators to make sure the food is safe and legal to distribute and eat. Other sources of food include the general public, sometimes in the form of food drives, and government programs that buy and distribute excess farm products mostly to help support higher commodity prices. Food banks can also buy food either at market prices or from wholesalers and retailers at discounted prices, often at cost. Sometimes farmers will allow food banks to send gleaners to salvage leftover crops for free once their primary harvest is complete. 
A few food banks have even taken over their own farms, though such initiatives have not always been successful. Many food banks don't accept fresh produce, preferring canned or packaged food due to health and safety concerns, though some have tried to change this as part of a growing worldwide awareness of the importance of nutrition. As an example, in 2012, London Food Bank Canada started accepting perishable food, reporting that as well as the obvious health benefits, there were noticeable emotional benefits to recipients when they were given fresh food. Summer can be a challenging time for food banks, especially in regions where school children are usually given regular free meals during term time. Spikes in demand can coincide with periods where donations fall due to folk being on holiday. North America History The world's first food bank was the St. Mary's Food Bank Alliance in Arizona, founded by John Van Hengel in 1967. According to sociology professor Janet Poppendike, hunger within the U.S. was widely considered to be a solved problem until the mid-1960s. By the mid-60s, several states had ended the free distribution of federal food surpluses, instead providing an early form of food stamps which had the benefit of allowing recipients to choose food of their liking, rather than having to accept whatever happened to be in surplus at the time. However, there was a minimum charge and some people could not afford the stamps, leading to severe hunger. One response from American society to the rediscovery of hunger was to step up the support provided by soup kitchens and similar civil society food relief agencies, some of these dated back to the Great Depression and earlier. In 1965, while volunteering for a community dining room, Van Hengel learned that grocery stores often had to throw away food that had damaged packaging or was near expiration. He started collecting that food for the dining room but soon had too much for that one program. He thought of creating a central location from which any agency can receive donations. Described as a classic case of, if you build it they will come. The first food bank was created with the help of St. Mary's Basilica. Food banks spread across the United States, and to Canada. By 1976, the precursor to Feeding America had been established. As of the early 21st century, their network of over 200 food banks provides support for 90,000 projects. Other large networks exist such as AmpleHarvest.org, created by CNN Hero and World Food Prize nominee Gary Oppenheimer which lists more than 8,200 food pantries one out of every five in America across all 60 states that can utilize overproduction of fresh produce. In the 1980s, U.S. food banks began to grow rapidly. A second response to the rediscovery of hunger in the mid-60s had been extensive lobbying of politicians to improve welfare. Until the 1980s, this approach had greater impact. In the 1970s, U.S. federal expenditure on hunger relief grew by about 500%, with food stamps distributed free of charge to those in greatest need. According to Poppendike, welfare was widely considered preferable to grassroots efforts, as the latter could be unreliable, did not give recipients consumer-style choice in the same way as did food stamps, and risked recipients feeling humiliated by having to turn to charity. In the early 1980s, President Reagan's administration scaled back welfare provision, leading to a rapid rise in activity from grassroots hunger relief agencies. According to a comprehensive government survey completed in 2002, over 90% of food banks were established in the U.S. after 1981. Poppendike says that for the first few years after the change, there was vigorous opposition from left, who argued that state welfare was much more suitable for meeting recipients' needs. But in the decades that followed, food banks have become an accepted part of America's response to hunger. Demand for the services of U.S. food bank increased further in the late 1990s, after the end of welfare as we know it, with President Clinton's Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Act. In Canada, food banks underwent a period of rapid growth after the cutbacks in welfare that took place in the mid-1990s. As early as the 1980s, food banks had also begun to spread from the United States to the rest of the world. The first European food bank was founded in France during 1984. In the 1990s and early 2000s, food banks were established in South America, Africa, and Asia, in several cases with Van Hengel acting as a consultant. In 2007, the Global Food Banking Network was formed. 
Topic: <laughs> Food aid for pets. Some U.S. cities have organizations that provide dog and cat food for pets whose owners qualify for food assistance. For example, Daffy's Pet Soup Kitchen in Lawrenceville, Georgia is considered the largest pet food aid agency in Georgia, distributing over 800,000 pounds of dog and cat food in 2012. Daffy's Pet Soup Kitchen was started in 1997 by Tom Wargo, a repairman who was working in an elderly woman's home when he noticed her sharing her meals on wheels lunch with her pet cat because she couldn't afford cat food. Daffy's was one of seven non-profits recognized by Barefoot Wine in 2013 through a $10,000 donation and by being featured on labels of the Vintner's Impression Red Blend Wines. Pet Buddy's Food Pantry in Woodstock, Georgia is another example of an establishment that provides food aid for pets. The St. Augustine Humane Society in St. Augustine, Florida, distributes over 1,600 pounds of pet food each month to families who are experiencing economic hardship and cannot afford to feed their pets. After 2007 financial crisis Following the financial crisis of 2007–08, and the lasting inflation in the price of food that began in late 2006, there has been a further increase in the number of individuals requesting help from American and Canadian food banks. By 2012, according to Food Banks Canada, over 850,000 Canadians needed help from a food bank each month. For the United States, Gleaners Indiana Food Bank reported in 2012 that there were then 50 million Americans struggling with food insecurity about one in six of the population, with the number of individuals seeking help from food banks having increased by 46% since 2005. According to a 2012 UCLA Center for Health Policy Research study, there has been a 40% increase in demand for Californian food banks since 2008, with married couples who both work sometimes requiring the aid of food banks. Dave Krepcho, director of the Second Harvest Food Bank in Orlando, has said that college educated professional couples have begun to turn to food pantries. By mid 2012, U.S. food banks had expressed concerns on the expected difficulty in feeding the hungry over the coming months. Rapidly rising demand has been coinciding with higher food prices and with a decrease in donations, partly as the food industry is becoming more efficient and so has less mislabeled and other slightly defective food to give away. Also there has been less surplus federal food on offer. Additionally, there have been recent decreases in federal funding, and Congress have been debating possible further cuts, including potentially billions of dollars from the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program food stamp program. In September 2012, Feeding America launched Hunger Action Month, with events planned all over the nation. Food banks and other agencies involved hope to raise awareness that about one in six Americans are struggling with hunger, and to get more Americans involved in helping out. Europe The first European food bank was founded in France during 1984. The first Italian food bank was established in 1989. Similar to the UK's experience, food banks have become much more common across continental Europe since the crisis that began in 2008, and especially since austerity began to take effect from late 2010. In Spain, food banks can operate on the warehouse model, supplying a network of surrounding soup kitchens and other food relief agencies. The Spanish Federation of Food Banks FESBAL helped to feed about 800,000 people during 2008-2011, according to the Carrefour Foundation. By October 2014, Spain had 55 food banks in total, with the numbers who depend on them having increased to 1.5 million. In Belgium, food banks helped about 121,000 people during 2012. That was an increase of about 4,500 compared with 2011, the biggest increase since the start of the 2008 crisis. Belgian food banks account for about 65% of all food aid given out within the country. The number of food banks has increased rapidly even in Germany, a country that has weathered the crisis relatively well, and has not needed to implement severe austerity. In 2012, Professor Sabine Pfeiffer of Munich University of Applied Sciences said there has been an explosion of food bank usage. <laughs> Most Deprived Persons Program 
While many European food banks are run by civil society with no government assistance, there is a project funded by the EU, the Most Deprived Persons Programme (MDP), which specializes in supplying food to marginalized people who are not covered by the benefit system and who may be reluctant to approach the more formal food banks. Food is largely given out by Catholic churches. However, the EU is due to end funding for the MDP in 2013. Similar to the US, the EU no longer expects to need to buy much food to help farmers, as with high global food prices, market surpluses are now much less frequent, so there is less food available to hand out to food banks. In October 2012, the European Commission proposed a new fund to replace the Most Deprived Persons Program. United Kingdom There are at least 2,000 food banks in the United Kingdom and demand is growing. Professor John May, of Queen Mary University of London and the Independent Food Aid Network, said statistics showed rapid rise in numbers of food banks during the last five years. There are now food banks in almost every community, from the east end of London to the Cotswolds. The spread of food banks maps growing problems of poverty across the UK, but also the growing drive among many thousands of people across the country to try and do something about those problems. Though food banks were rarely seen in the UK in the second half of the 20th century, their use has started to grow, especially in the 2000s, and have since dramatically expanded. The increase in the dependency on food banks has been blamed on the 2008 recession and the government's austerity policies. These policies have included cuts to the welfare state and caps on the total amount of welfare support that a family can claim. The OECD found that people answering yes to the question, have there been times in the past 12 months when you did not have enough money to buy food that you or your family needed, decreased from 9.8% in 2007 to 8.1% in 2012, leading some to say that the rise was due to both more awareness of food banks, and job centers referring people to food banks when they were hungry. Rachel Loopstra, lecturer on nutrition at King's College London and food insecurity expert, said, recent national survey data suggests that 8% of adults experienced not having enough money for food over 2016 this figure is likely to be many times more than the number helped by food banks. We need ongoing national survey monitoring to understand the scale of food insecurity, who is at risk, and the implications for child and adult health and well-being. Those who are short of food are frequently also short of other products they need like shampoo and basic hygiene products. Some people must choose between buying food and buying hygiene products. As of January 2014, there were close to 1000 UK food banks. The largest group co-ordinating UK food banks was the Trussell Trust, a Christian charity based in Salisbury. About 43% of the UK's food banks were run by Trussell, about 20% by smaller church networks such as Beesham and Basics, about 31% were independent, and about 4% were run by secular food bank networks such as Fair Share and Food Cycle. Before the financial crisis, food banks were almost unheard of in the UK. In 2004, Trussell only ran two food banks, but by 2007-2008, there were 22 food banks in the Trussell Trust Food Bank Network and by early 2011, the Trussell Trust supported 100. As of May 2012, they had 201. By August, 252. The rate of increase had been rising rapidly. In 2011, about one new food bank was being opened per week. In early 2012, about two were being opened each week. By July, the Trussell Trust had reported that the rate of new openings had increased to three per week. In August, the rate of new openings spiked at four per week, with three new food banks being opened in that month for Nottingham alone. By October 2012, the rate of increase had fallen back to about two or three per week. Most UK food banks are hosted by churches in partnership with the wider community. They operate on the front line model, giving out food directly to the hungry. Over 90% of the food given out is donated by the public, including schools, churches, businesses and individuals. The Trussell Trust had aimed to provide short-term support for people whose needs have not yet been addressed by official state welfare provision, those who had been falling into the cracks in the system. The Trussell franchise has procedures which aim to prevent long-term dependency on their services, and to ensure that those in need are referred to qualified outside agencies. The charity suggests that the credit crunch caused an upsurge in the number of people needing emergency food. 
Since 2010, demand for food banks continued to increase, and at a more rapid rate, partly as austerity began to take effect, and partly as those on low incomes began to draw down savings and run out of friends of whom they were willing to ask for help. Unlike soup kitchens, most but not all UK food banks are unable to help people who come in off the street without a referral, instead they operate with a referral system. Vouchers are handed out to those in need by various sorts of frontline care professionals, such as social workers, health visitors, citizens' advice bureau, job centres and housing officials. The voucher can typically be exchanged at the food bank for a package of food sufficient to last three days. The year to April 2013 saw close to 350,000 referrals to Trussell Food Banks, more than double the amount from the previous year. A number of food banks have been set up outside of the Trussell system, some faith based, others secular, in part as they don't like having to turn away people without referrals. Although Trussell Trust Food Banks do help clients in need without vouchers to get one as quickly as possible. There is also Farishare, a London based charity which operates some 19 depots on the US style warehouse model. Rather than giving out food directly to individuals, Farishare distributes food to over 700 smaller agencies, mainly smaller independent operations like soup kitchens and breakfast clubs. Great emphasis is placed on reducing food waste as well as relieving food poverty. Farishare operates on a business basis, employing a number of managers to oversee operations alongside their army of volunteers. Employee costs constituted over 50% of their expenditure in both 2011 and 2012. Additionally, charities receiving food do incur a charge for deliveries. Another charity which operates on the U.S.-style warehouse model and with a similar emphasis placed on reducing food waste as well as relieving food poverty is the Oxford Food Bank, which has a single base delivering to around 30 charities in the Oxford area. Although a much smaller enterprise than Farishare, it has a significantly lower pro rata cost base as it employs no staff, with the whole operation up to director level run entirely by volunteers. This allows it to provide food at no cost to the recipient charities with all operating costs covered by grants and donations, supplying an estimated £25 of food at retail value for each £1 received in donations. In December 2012, it also started distributing food to needy families direct with the aid of local community centers and social services. People who turn to food banks are typically grateful both for the food and for the warmth and kindness they receive from the volunteers. However, sometimes food banks have run out of supplies by the time they arrive. Some find it humiliating to have to ask for food, and that the packages they receive don't always seem nutritious. Some food banks have tried to respond with innovative programs. London Street Food Bank, for example, has begun asking donors to send in supermarket vouchers so that those they serve will be able to choose food that best meets their nutritional needs. The Trussell Trust revealed a 47% increase in number of three day emergency supplies provided by their food banks in December 2016 compared to the monthly average for 2016 17 financial year. Public donations in December 2016 meant food banks met the increased need in that month, but donations in January, February and March 2017 all fell below the monthly average of 931 tons for the 2016-17 financial year. Although going for a few years by various small charities around the world, 2017 saw a significant increase in media coverage and take up of the reverse advent calendar. The UK Money Bloggers campaign encouraging the public to give something to a food bank every day for 25 days was covered by The Mirror The Guardian and iNews and others. Emma Revy of the Trussell Trust said, For too many people staying above water is a daily struggle. Food bank use has increased since Universal Credit started. Delays in providing money force claimants to use food banks, also Universal Credit does not provide enough to cover basic living expenses. Claiming universal credit is complex and the system is hard to navigate. Many claimants cannot afford internet access and cannot access online help with claiming. A report by the Trussell Trust says, rather than acting as a service to ensure people do not face destitution, the evidence suggests that for people on the very lowest incomes, the poor functioning of universal credit can actually push people into a tide of bills, debts and, ultimately, lead them to a food bank. People are falling through the cracks in a system not made to hold them. What little support available is primarily offered by the third sector, whose work is laudable, but cannot be a substitute for a real, nationwide safety net. UK food banks are appealing for volunteers and supplies since they fear an increase in demand for food as universal credit is rolled out further. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <laughs> Comparison to other countries. Food bank use in Germany and France is allegedly much higher than in Britain. In 2014, 1.5 million people a week used food banks in Germany and, according to Toby Young, there are twice as many food banks in France as there are in Britain. <laughs> UK food bank users According to a May 2013 report by Oxfam and Church Action on Poverty, about half a million Britons had used food banks. The Trussell Trust reports that their food banks alone helped feed 346,992 people in 2012-13, close to half of those needing to use food banks have had issues with their benefits. Sanctioning benefits was the single most frequent reason for food bank referrals, and there has been criticism over sanctions being imposed for allegedly spurious reasons. A joint report from the Trussell Trust, the Church of England, and the charities Oxfam and Child Poverty Action Group found that food bank users were more likely to live in rented accommodation, be single adults or lone parents, be unemployed, and have experienced a sanction, where their unemployment benefits were cut for at least one month delay in paying housing benefit, disability benefit, and other benefits benefits and general bureaucratic issues with benefits can force people to use food banks. Many further people who need food banks have low-income jobs, but struggle to buy food after making debt repayments and all expenses. Low-paid workers, part-time workers and those with zero-hour contracts are particularly vulnerable to financial crisis and sometimes need food banks. As had been predicted, demand for food banks further increased after cuts to welfare came into effect in April 2013, which included the abolishment of crisis loans. In April 2014 Trussell reported that they had handed out 913,000 food parcels in the last year, up from 347,000 the year before. Several councils have begun looking at funding food banks to increase their capability, as cuts to their budgets mean they will be less able to help vulnerable people directly. Sabine Goodwin, independent food aid network researcher, said most food bank workers reported increasing demand for food aid. Many feel they are firefighting, finding a way to deal with the logistics of feeding more and more people, with no time to advocate for changes that would eradicate the need for food banks in the first place. Topic. UK government According to an all-party parliamentary report released in December 2014, key reasons for the increased demand for UK food banks are delays in paying benefits, welfare sanctions, and the recent reversal of the post-World War II trend for poor people's incomes to rise above or in line with increased costs for housing, utility bills and food. In 2013 the British government blocked a £22 million European Union fund to help finance food banks in the UK. This disappointed Labour MEP, Richard Howitt, who assisted in negotiating the fund. Howitt stated, It is very sad that our government is opposing this much-needed help for food banks on the basis that it is a national responsibility, when in reality it has no intention of providing the help itself. The only conclusion is that conservative anti-European ideology is being put before the needs of the most destitute and deprived in our society. Harun Siddiqui notes that the rise in food bank use coincides with the imposition of austerity and feels the government are reluctant to admit the obvious link. Siddiqui notesd that during the 2017 election campaign Prime Minister, Theresa May was asked about even nurses, then subject to a 1% annua pay freeze using food banks and May merely replied, there are many complex reasons why people go to food banks, Siddiqui wrote further. The reasons people turn to food banks are quite plain and there have been studies that support them. The Trussell Trust, the UK's biggest food bank network, has said that they help people with nowhere else to turn. Earlier in 2018, it said that food banks in areas where the full universal credit service had been in place for 12 months or more were four times as busy. Britain's former Prime Minister David Cameron said in the House of Commons in 2012 that he welcomed the efforts of food banks. Caroline Spellman, his Secretary of State for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, has described food banks as an excellent example of active citizenship. Labour MP Kate Green has a different view, feeling that the rise of food banks reflects people being let down by the state welfare system, saying, I feel a real burning anger about them. 
People are very distressed at having to ask for food, it's humiliating and distressing." Cookery writer and poverty campaigner Jack Monroe wrote that those referred to food banks or given vouchers were, "...the lucky ones with a good doctor or health visitor who knows us well enough to recognize that something has gone seriously wrong." and expressed concern for those who lack this support food banks need extra donations during the long summer school holiday because school children do not get free school meals during that time rising cost of living and the rollout of universal credit are also blamed topic <inaudible> <inaudible> germany there are over 900 food banks in germany up from just one in 1993 in 2014, 1.5 million people a week used food banks in Germany. Topic: France. In total, around 3.5 million people rely on food banks in France. One provider, the Bank Alimentaire, has over 100 branches in France, serving 200 million meals a year to 1.85 million people. Asia Several Asian places have begun to use food banks, these include South Korea, Japan and Taiwan, ROC. Singapore In Singapore the food bank concept is being pioneered by the Food Bank Singapore. India Delhi Food Bank is an organization that feeds, empowers and transforms lives in the New Delhi NCR region. They hold that their shared capabilities can make the basic aspiration of universal access to food a reality. They attempt to pursue this vision through high quality and standards for processes leveraged by technology to get the right aid to the right people at the right time. Hong Kong The first food bank in Hong Kong is Feeding Hong Kong. It was founded in 2009. Food Angel is also a food bank in Hong Kong. Africa The Egyptian Food Bank was established in Cairo in 2006, and less than 10 years later, food banks run on similar principles spread to other Arab countries in North Africa and the Middle East. In Sub Saharan Africa, there are charity run food banks that operate on a semi commercial system that differs from both the more common warehouse and frontline models. In some rural LDCs such as Malawi, food is often relatively cheap and plentiful for the first few months after the harvest, but then becomes more and more expensive. Food banks in those areas can buy large amounts of food shortly after the harvest, and then as food prices start to rise, they sell it back to local people throughout the year at well below market prices. Such food banks will sometimes also act as centers to provide small holders and subsistence farmers with various forms of support. Formed in 2009, Food Bank South Africa food bank SAW is South Africa's national food banking network and a member of the Global Food Banking Network. Food Bank SAW's vision is a South Africa without hunger and malnutrition. Topic: <laughs> Worldwide Since the 1980s food banking has spread around the world. There are over 25 countries with active food bank groups under the umbrella of the Global Food Banking Network. Countries in the international network include Australia, Israel, Turkey, Russia, India, Taiwan, Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Hong Kong, Singapore, South Korea and the UK. There are also several countries with food banks but which have not yet joined the network, either as they don't yet meet the required criteria or as they have not applied. An alternative facility offering food to the hungry can be found worldwide wherever there are sizable Sikh communities. Long before food banks were invented, Langar has been making free vegetarian food available to Sikhs and non-Sikhs alike. Topic reactions The rise of food banks has been broadly welcomed. 
Not only do they provide a solution to the problem of hunger that doesn't require resources from the state, but they can be viewed as evidence of increasing community spirit and of active, caring citizenship. In the UK for example, Patrick Butler, society editor for The Guardian, has written that the rise of food banks has been most enthusiastically welcomed by the right, but also by many on the left of the political spectrum, who were often nervously excited about them. However, there has been considerable concern expressed by some researchers and politicians. Drawing on the United States's experience after the rapid rise of food banks in the 1980s, American sociology professor Janet Poppendike warned that the rise of food banks can contribute to a long-term erosion of human rights and support for entitlements. Once food banks become well established, it can be politically impossible to return responsibility for meeting the needs of hungry people to the state. Poppendike says that the logistics of running food banks can be so demanding that they prevent kind-hearted people from having time to participate in public policy advocacy, yet she also says if they can be encouraged to lobby politicians for long-term changes that would help those on low income, they often have considerable credibility with legislators. As of 2012, senior U.S. food banks workers have expressed a preference to remain politically neutral, which political activists have suggested may relate to their sources of funding. Rachel Loopstra from University of Toronto has said food banks are often inefficient, unreliable, and unable to supply nutritional food. She said a survey in Toronto found that only one in five families suffering from food insecurity would turn to food banks, in part as there is a stigma associated with having to do so. Elizabeth Dowler, professor of food and social policy at Warwick University, said that most British people prefer the state to take responsibility for helping the hungry. Hannah Lambie Mumford, from Sheffield University, echoed the view that some users of food banks find having to ask for food humiliating, and also that food banks volunteers should be encouraged to advocate for long term solutions to the underlying causes of poverty and hunger. Olivier de Shutter, a senior United Nations official charged with ensuring governments honor their obligation to safeguard their citizens' right to food, has expressed alarm at the rise of food banks. He has reminded the governments of the advanced economies in Europe, Britain and Canada that they have a duty to protect their citizens from hunger, and suggested that leaving such an obligation to food banks may be an abuse of human rights. See also Ag against hunger BALMEVG Construction Emerson Good Samaritan Food Donation Act Food Not Bombs Gleaners Good Shepherd Food Bank Hopelink National Association of Letter Carriers Hashtag Annual Food Drive Northwest Harvest Olio App Topic. Notes and references Topic. External links The Global Food Bank Network, includes resources to find food banks throughout the world. Hunger Relief at Curlie